Welcome back into Wake Up America. Once again in the briefing room in the White House, Press Secretary Jen Psaki didn't have much to say about climate change when she was asked a fairly basic question in today's Psaki Dodge. I don't have a new timeline to, to give you from here. I can confirm for you, though, that the president agrees with former Secretary Kerry that it's a crisis, uh, that time is of the essence. We need to act quickly, uh, and that's why climate is a key part of his agenda. I don't, I don't know what that was. That was an answer, apparently. Uh, we'll let the panel talk about that and a whole lot more. Chris Arps, Mark Halpern, Emerald Robinson, Aaron Elmore, all back with us here. Uh, Emerald, oh. already, I've already got you laughing. Um, I, what is it like in that briefing room? Does it... it are, are the other oh. reporters like, what did she say? Is that? No. Well, sometimes when I ask a question, they'll turn around and look and see who it is. And they're like, oh, it's Emerald. Right. Um, but uh, what she was answering the question to was about John Kerry's statement during the G7 in which he said that the timeline has now shortened to climate catastrophe yes. to nine years. Right. I mean, where did they get these numbers? It was 12. And that's what they were, what a reporter was essentially asking, Aaron, is where does this number come from? Right, right. It was 12, and that was three years ago. Is that, that's what John Kerry said, Aaron? Yeah, yeah and they're using this. Sorry, I was more just like, I couldn't help but comment. I didn't mean to interrupt you at all, Emerald. <laughs> I just can't take one more minute of this right. nonsense. It's like, am I taking crazy pills? As John Kerry drives around on his private jet and on his diesel boat and on his not environmentally friendly house in Nantucket that's like a mega mansion. Like, enough already. Practice what you preach. Can one Democrat politician please just practice what they preach? It's Nancy Pelosi in the hair salon without the mask. Gavin Newsom at the French Laundry. Lori Lightfoot of Chicago getting her hair done saying, well, I'm an elected official. I can't take much more of this, and I'm very sorry, Emerald. I did not mean to interrupt you. No, it, I, why are you leaving that Governor Whitman to everyone boat? to know where is where does that timeline come up, come from, and what they're using it for is to justify speeding up the the progressive policies that fundamentally changes our economy. I have a tough it's like time. They pick a number out of the hat. They're like seven years. Yeah, yeah that's literally, the number. magic number. I mean, do you guys remember the inconvenient truth, Al Gore? Yeah. When that whole thing came out, he was like, you know, his voice, the lockbox, you know, the world was going to end, Mark. I know you and Al Gore are close, but, you know, he said the world was going to be over by now, 2021, and we're still here. I'm still standing, as the great Elton John once said. Do you want to hear my shorter version of Jen Psaki? Let's, let's hear the long version, actually. <laughs> I mean, the short version. Here's my shorter Jen Psaki. Hamina, hamina, hamina. Yeah, exactly. I, by, <laughs> by the way, I think, Aaron, I think the house is on Martha's Vineyard. I think he's got a $4.5 million oceanfront estate. It was, it was on Nantucket. It's now on Martha's now Vineyard. Now it's on Martha's Vineyard. Oh, well, well, excuse right. me. It would be it one thing. Got richer, right? When I hear these elitists. The sea level rise. Right, when you're buying oceanfront properties. Not buy for him. Right, Bill Gates just bought like a $20 million place in Southern California right on the water. If the ocean is going to rise, why are you buying beachfront property? Shouldn't that be the cheapest property right now? <laughs> I always say, there, there's this hotel that I, I've stayed at down in Florida, and it's right on the beach. It's been there. It's in St. Petersburg. It's been there since like 1905. When you go in there and you look at the pictures from, you know, when they opened up the hotel and everyone's in those funny old bathing suits that were like made of wool, the beach looks exactly the same right now as it did over 100 years ago. So, like, where's the sea level rise? Like something. Yeah, that's scientific right there. Um, well, I will not make the mistake about Martha's Vineyard again. Now I know. He's on the vineyard. Yeah, and he's not, he's not like, reduce, reuse, recycle. He's not composting his, his, you know, toilets. He's, you know, not riding a bike to work. We're talking about... Bill Gates and John Kerry, like, it's just so elitist. If it was Bernie Sanders, I would be a little bit more understanding listening to it because I think he does somewhat practice what he preaches. Like, I'm sure Bernie Sanders recycles. But when you hear John Kerry, it just doesn't, it's just not believable at all to me. Yeah, and I think John Kerry, I mean, I know on his second marriage, he got rich because of her family money. I think his first marriage was the same way. So it's not even like he earned any of it with his own blood, sweat, and tears, which is disgusting. Yeah. He's spending all these other people's <laughs> money talking about saving the environment while he's on a private jet that his wife financed. Teresa Hines. I mean, Mark, you were you covered that 04 campaign when he was out there with the Livestrong bracelet on a, on a windsurfer. I'm born and raised on Cape Cod. Born and raised. Okay, so like Emerald's from West Virginia. I, I am from there. I am. Virginia. I, you, you, you would think, Virginia, you would think I would know how to do it. I don't know how to windsurf. 
<laughs> the man likes what he likes. I, what can I tell you? If you're if you're asking me to spend my morning defending John Kerry's habits, <laughs> you got to look somewhere else. It's going to be a long day. It's going to be a long morning. All right, what do you guys want to talk about? We got a lot to get to right now. I, I did think this was kind of important. Jen Psaki yesterday. Uh, again, in the White House briefing room, talking about um, some of the, the mixed messaging we're now getting, not just from the World Health Organization, but also from the CDC on when vaccinated people can see family members again. Take a listen. Our COVID coordinator, Jeff Zients, announced the fifth consecutive week of supply increases. States will now receive 14.5 million doses uh, this week, up from 8.6 million doses per week when the president took office. That's an increase in, vac in vaccine allocations of nearly 70 percent during the Biden-Harris administration. All right. And to kind of go off that, the question was, well, when will people that have received both doses, um, elderly people in particular, you know, grandparents, parents out there, be able to hug their grandkids again? And, and the CDC is deflecting, saying, well, maybe not just yet, even though you're vaccinated. I thought that was the whole point of the vaccine was to get us back to well, normal, Emerald. Fauci recently said that too. Agreeing or or, or agreeing yeah. with the CDC? Say, saying he didn't know yet, saying it was too soon to yeah. say. You know, Fauci, Fauci can't be fired probably, but what's crazy here is the whole premise of the Biden campaign was the coin of the realm is honesty on the pandemic. We're just gonna tell you the truth. And now they've got Fauci out there, it turns out he wasn't doing double talk because of Donald Trump. That's just what he does on this stuff. Why, why, Chris, why is this continuing to happen with Anthony Fauci? They keep, they keep propping him up and putting him out there on TV. He's, we've invited him on Wake Up America on numerous occasions. He doesn't want to come on here because he might get a challenging question. I'm going to be fair. I'm going to be objective. But I'm going to ask him a few questions and maybe play him a few sound bites of himself. Well, I think you mentioned it or gave the answer earlier when you mentioned he's been he's 80 years old. He's been in government service for 40 years. Uh, the Bidens and Democrats have touted him as touted him as the expert. And I think they like to put him out there to deflect on some of the things that uh, that they're not doing correctly and uh, try to uh, make him the expert. But, you know, Dr. Fauci has been around a long time. And uh, I agree. I think uh, the calls for his resignation are warranted. Yeah. Aaron, final thought on Fauci, and then we'll move on. He's like the longest serving bureaucrat in Washington, and I feel sorry for these grandparents that aren't hugging their grandchildren when life is already so short and so precious. I know some people are afraid of the virus, but the survival rates are extremely high, and I wish people would feel more capable to make better decisions for themselves than listening to some bureaucrat that's very self-interested, both financially, personally, and politically. I'll just give you a final uh thing that I found interesting yesterday, the state of North Dakota, obviously, you know, one of the least populated states in the country, they have now banned, they passed a bill, uh, 50 to 44 in the uh, lower chamber, banning mandatory face masks. So if you go to a Walmart now in North Dakota, you cannot require people to wear face masks. That's how far they're taking it a year into this thing, Emerald. Good. Well, a lot of people are just really tired of these mask mandates, and specifically after they hear this double talk from the quote unquote leading expert, Dr. Fauci. And uh, I think we're going to see more of this because it's not just Republicans and conservatives saying this now. You're seeing a growing chorus of Democrats or just citizens who don't consider themselves really one, either one, speaking out about it and how it's hurting their livelihoods. All right, let me play a soundbite from uh, South Dakota Senator John Thune talking about the uh, the COVID relief bill. Oh, excuse me, the American Rescue Plan. Got to make sure we call it that now. It's the American Rescue Plan. Take a listen. Yeah, with the messaging, Rob. Yeah. They have decided first bill out of the gate this year, coronavirus bill, which is, again, is, is way too big to start with and has a lot of questionable uh, pieces to it. Uh, they decide to try and do it at 51 votes, I think, which tells you that this is never about trying to get a bipartisan bill that deals with the virus, but rather uh, using the pandemic for political gain. So, Mark, apparently America United does not apply to Congress, correct? I mean, you know, this is just your Groundhog Day for people who worked in the Biden Obama, Obama Biden administration. Once again, they're starting off with a big spending bill without consulting Republicans or very many Democrats. And they're expecting things to be different. They're expecting Republicans to fall in line. It doesn't look like they will for this bill. And they're expecting Republicans to overlook what they've done and work with them on subsequent stuff. It's, it's, it doesn't seem to me, from people I'm talking to in both parties, that this plan is going to work if Joe Biden wants a bipartisan administration. All right, panel, we'll leave it there. We'll see you guys again at the top of the hour. Great stuff. Looking forward to it.